Frederick, congratulations. Big day for you. It's a, it's a really big day. It, oh, it's not ready now. What's that room service? So the food is here. And, and what is it? Thai salad with chicken. And it sounds as if you're in a, you're in the French hotel in Paris, I would assume. Yes, I'm at AOT. Tomorrow we're doing, it's the first time I'm visiting the factory. Uh, it's the first time I will be, or second time I'll be, um, yeah, visiting my new engineer, uh, which I'm super excited for. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a pretty crazy day coming up tomorrow. I'm standing here in front of AIT. So today we have seat fit and different things for the season, which is super exciting. I'll just show you quickly. So we are here, the entrance of the building. I'm gonna start working with my new engineer, Amori, and of course my mechanics and the whole team at AIT. We've been doing a lot of simulator work, meetings. And I can imagine, things. it must be just the most brilliant of days because I don't know, I'm only guessing, but I'm assuming that this deal, apart from obviously switching from Prima to ART, which is a big thing in itself and has its pluses and minuses, I guess, in some ways, but beyond that, the Mercedes deal must give you a feeling of security that you've never had in your life before, really, I would guess. Indeed. Actually, a lot of people are asking me, yeah, you will get a lot more pressure now. Be careful with that and so on. And yes, for sure, a lot of people will be looking at me now uh, because it's, it's an official junior driver with Mercedes. It's, it's very big. But as you were saying, I actually feel more secure. I feel like I have the backing yeah. from such a big team and from so well educated and great uh, racing engineers and, and people. And I think that will add a lot to my uh, to to my career. It will boost my career a lot, which I'm looking very much forward to. Yeah, I, I totally get that. People love to talk about the pressure here and the pressure there. Of course, you put pressure on yourself in every race, in every qualifying session. And and what this is, is it's it's a way of going to sleep at night, knowing basically what your career path is going to be. And that's something about which all young race drivers can only dream really and here it is you've you've achieved it and you've earned it you've earned it with some unbelievably good drives last year well let's let's just talk about a few of the elements here because i guess in a way probably you're sort of getting into teo pusher's car really are you his engineers his team in some ways true uh, he's moving to f2 say so i'm gonna stay one more year in f3 and I've taken that decision simply because I think it's the right way for me to show the right people that I'm strong enough to stay one more year. Yeah. And with that, I mean that moving up to Formula 2 was a possibility for me, but it would also have been an easy getaway uh, from all the, the tough pressure that will be on being a favorite in, uh, in the championship. And there's, there's, yeah, there's no doubt that my goal next year or this year is to to win the championship and of it's course, for sure yeah. so the team's champions uh, let's say goal to win the championship and i totally go along with that with that as well because i mean apart from anything else f3 is as you say incredibly competitive they're quick cars now and if you go as well as perhaps you might, and obviously you hope as hope that you will. That will send a, a, a very loud message out to the the world at large of how you know what you can achieve, and if you can do really well this year, that's a great thing. Tell me, how long had this been going on for the the talks with Mercedes? When did when did they first approach you, and who approached you? Well, it's actually a pretty interesting story because it was all the way back in 2018. I think we had the first sort of contact, and that was with Gwen Lagru. Um, and it basically came from my team, Fanamas Ford Racing, uh, that I was racing with in Germany mm. F4. Um, and, and they sort of start sending emails to Gwen. The team did from my, let's say, from my point of view, they, they started to push a bit and saying they had to look out for me and sort of start a conversation. And then in 2018 at the Monaco Grand Prix, um, I had, I was there, I was invited by my friend. Uh, to go to the Grand Prix, which was a great weekend. But then also I had a meeting uh, with Gwen Lagruy from Mercedes. Um, and that was sort of the first meeting I had where I realized how much work I need to put in to even get a chance uh, to get a junior program uh, contract with Mercedes. And, you know, I was walking into the meeting thinking that, yeah, that's possible. Uh, 
I just need to to do well and blah blah. And and then I came out like, okay, actually, it needs to. There's so many things that I need to do right, and they I need to show them that I'm fast, consistent, a good qualifier, uh, also good as a person, someone that can represent their brand and their team in a good way. Uh, so there were so many things that needed to go right. And, and but and, still and there wasn't you, any, yes? Have you had any interaction with, uh, with Toto Wolf? Uh, I actually have also in 2018. Uh, and that's sort of when I really got the motivation and I was like, I need to, I really want, deeply I want to become a Mercedes junior driver. And that was at the German Grand Prix in 2018. Uh, I was racing in Formula 4 and we were a support class to Formula 1 and I did the pole position and won the race in front of Toto Wolf and he was on the podium giving me the trophy and I remember shaking his hand and thinking this is this is my future this is what I want to be uh, with Mercedes um, so it like it's over three four years this dream of becoming a Mercedes junior driver has been in my thoughts and in my mind and it's also during the whole year of 2019 and 20 has been driving me forward so when I was in the car I was pushing myself knowing that if I do well I have the, possi the possibility to join the, the program um, so it's a very long time that we have been discussing. And yet you were at Prema, and there are obvious connections there with the Ferrari Driver Academy as well. How was that going around in your mind? Well, of course, I was at Prema uh, in two years, which I've been so happy, uh, and I can't appre appreciate that their support and of Pedro, my engineer, has helped me so much to develop as the driver I am today. Um, but. I think to 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 be honest, to to go on with the Mercedes program, I think AT was the right choice for me, uh, simply because Mercedes and AT will be able to together really uh, raise my level and help me to raise my own level as a driver. Uh, so that was a pretty natural step. I'm halfway. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm I'm, I'm it, this is a goal on my way to my biggest goal to become world champion in Formula One. And that's very important for me to say as well, because it's so easy to get, let's say, let's say high on something that is 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 official now with Mercedes. Mm -hmm. But so much hard work is still ahead of me, and I am so excited and motivated to do all of it and and to become a better driver every day, because that will be in the end what gives me the opportunity in Formula One.